Hello. So last year at PGCon, possibly in this very room, I came in with a problem, and that was that we had a large scope upgrade to do with a very minimal downtime. And the result of everything that happened and all the talks that went on last year is why you have this talk now. So we are doing upgrades from 9.2 to 9.4 with PG upgrade using hard links. The scope of the project was seven clusters with 37 servers, the largest of which was 667 gigs. It was 666 right till the day of and it tipped over. Uh, two data centers and two operating systems. We were using CentOS 5 and CentOS 6 at the time, which we weren't exactly sure of before we started, but we were. Uh, and the two data centers were relatively close. Uh, we're talking Sacramento to Oakland, so there was uh, very little latency problems, et cetera. Um, to us, this was a fairly large project because there were pieces of it that had to go together and some pieces that had to go separate. The restrictions on this upgrade were the time constraints primarily because as a SaaS company, we had four-hour windows in which we could take down service. And even during those four-hour windows, you would be amazed at the amount of students that tweeted very bad words about us. <laughs> so the... Of course, they never do that when we're not down. Yeah. So the amount of time that we need to take down the service is very minimal, which I'm sure all of you can identify with. Uh, whenever a student is not able to submit a paper, which is what we do, we have students through colleges, universities, high schools submit their papers to us, and then we do originality checking um, or some other services on top of those papers. So if a student misses their deadline, the whole world collapses. Um, and we also wanted to clear up some of our tech debt, and those uh, CentOS 5 machines were just going to go the way of the dinosaur, and everything was going to go CentOS 6. We're going to ignore the fact that CentOS 7 has been out for a while. So that translated into two maintenance windows, um, four hours each, because doing that amount of upgrades, um, while it is technically feasible with the method, the method that we chose, just the amount of time to do the administration on it was too much for one window. So we split that into two. We took our primary clusters and our secondary clusters, so everything that could be divided among application lines that we felt we could test together and have on one version of Postgres versus everything that could remain behind and go to the second version um, later. And then a final tertiary cluster that we could do without downtime to the actual product. So our options for doing this upgrade were the traditional uh, PG dump and restore. There's a lot of bonuses. OK, there's a huge bonus to that, um, which is your, your files on disk. You're not going to get the upgrade cruft of having the old version there. So you get a completely clean, your system looks like it has always been on that version, no issues. Um, the time issue with this was the thing we were looking at, because you have to stop your service, take your initial PG dump in a consistent state from the time your service is stopped. Uh, which alone takes about three and a half hours. And then you have to restore it on the master. And then you have to build all your slaves. So you're looking at a total downtime of a day um, for all of this, which anybody knows is absolutely prohibitive in a, in a SaaS service. So our second option, which we actually planned to go with for a while, was Sloney. Sloney is uh, quite complex. I'm sure you all have known that or have run across that in the past. Um, our uh, Sloney master had previously left for greener pastures, um, which we wished him well on, but he, it was uh, quite difficult for us, so we had a high stress factor around that. Sloney has a large setup and teardown phase. You have to add all the Sloney schema um, and functions into your original cluster, set up your secondary cluster on completely new hardware so that you have two in parallel clusters going on, so double the hardware requirement. And it's, it's basically just, unless you know Sony inside and out, I would not suggest it. So then we got to the PG upgrade and slave rebuild, which is awesome. It was getting there. Um, it's very well documented, well practiced. 
The problem is it took three hours or more for each of the slaves to build with our largest data set, which is again, that puts us within the four hour window. If we do everything just right, if we get the upgrade, if we start right at 7 a.m., it's possible that this method could finish in a four hour window, but it's not comfortable and it's not set. So we were still kind of looking for something just a little bit better, something that we could be comfortable going to the company and saying, hey, we're going to do this and it's going to work. So that gave us the right path, but then you have the choice of hard links or copy. So the hard links just create hard links um, between the old data directory and the new data directory upgrade in place. The copy makes a complete copy of your data directory. So if you have the room on space, if you have at least 50% plus space on your current environment, that's a safe way to go. You can always fail back because you have your old data there. If you chose to go with hard links and do an upgrade in place, if anything goes wrong, you have to have a backup somewhere else. You have to have other servers that you can fall back on. So this was getting there, but it wasn't quite what we wanted. So this hard links thing, that rollback we were a little stuck on, and it still took three and a half hours for the slaves. We didn't quite have the disk space for a full copy, so we knew this was the way that we were gonna have to go, but the three hours for the slaves was really kind of a sticking point for us. It wasn't, um, it wasn't where we wanted to go. And then we heard this thing. Actually, I think I heard this thing from Josh at a meetup, um, and he was talking about how he was looking at it for one of his clients, um, PG Upgrade with RSync. RSync is the way that you normally would build a slave pre-9.2. When the first versions of 9.0 came out, and you would set up RSync to do all your slaves. So it's something that you would be familiar with if you had done automation of slave builds um, before, before 9.2. So the downsides of that were, at the time, there, I couldn't find anything on it. Um, there was no, no real documentation. There was nothing in any blogs. Um, it just wasn't out. So I had to hunt down um, Josh and say, tell me more about this thing that I think I heard you say once. Um, he had mentioned it didn't go quite so well. He'd gone with the uh, Sony implementation. And so it wasn't sounding all that great, but it was still something I wasn't quite going to give up on because it took minutes. This is the thing that could take that time down to three hours to something that was completely workable, which was the holy grail of the whole project. So make this something we were comfortable with doing, that we could be confident, that would just work. So we chose that. After hunting down first Bruce to talk about PG Upgrade, and then Bruce pointed me over to Steven, um, who gave me lots of lots of great feedback on having done it and having said this is the way to go and talking about it, we went there. So document every single step and every command you do. When we first started this project, we failed and we failed lots and lots and lots. So we wrote down absolutely everything, test it and write even the, every single flag, write it down, be verbose with yourself. We took a month and a half to go through this, which is, I think, the original reason that um, Josh had gone with Sony was the time invested to perfect the process, which is just a, a luxury that was not given to them at the moment. We ended up doing a complete configuration overhaul. Uh, we have a lot of legacy tech debt with that. And basically, our system had to be in a perfect state to go forward. If you can't easily reset, if you can't test and fall back and do it again, it's going to be a very, very painful, painful process. So PG Upgrade. This worked perfectly for us. Upgrading the master was never a problem. And that's kind of the theme that you will see throughout this whole thing is that it was always the time to upgrade the slaves that was the problem. And I know I've talked to at least one person um, where PG upgrade was a problem um, based on the encoding of the database, but I haven't run into that yet. Luckily, that was the one point where everything in our system worked flawlessly. Um, and I, I've heard people don't trust it or it didn't work. 
I totally trust it. I'm a proponent. So this was our starting point uh, that Stephen provided last year. Um, this is the development docs um, into how to use hard links and rsync for the upgrade. So this is the, the super important part. From a directory that is above the old and new database clusters, run that rsync. So this is after you've done the PG upgrade, after your master's all happily there, and you've gone through the process of checking everything. rsync, archive, delete, hard links, size only, old data, new data to the remote directory. That's exactly line, word for word, what is in the doc. So we tried that. It didn't quite work so well. So the first thing is, you know, rsync um, wasn't our forte. I didn't come from a sysadmin background. I came from a developer background. Um, so rsync and all of its, its flags and pieces were not first, uh, the first thing in my wheelhouse. Even our sysadmins had to go back and forth with, forth with me on this a little bit, um, checking, resetting. There were permissions issues. Um, we didn't have root keys set up on both the master and slaves. So every time we did this, uh, this test, we had to temporarily either walk over and say, please type me your password. And finally, they just gave up and said, here, all your keys are everywhere, you're good. <laughs> so once we got root everywhere, um, everything was easy on that. But it was a slow process. It was a slow negotiation process. It was, we're going to rsync this cluster. Does this 700 gig rsync work? And we could get all the way through it and go, no, no, it didn't. We can get halfway through it, no. And even the pieces where it failed instantly meant we probably had to reset a cluster, which meant rebuilding all those slaves. So in the beginning, we ended up, I think we rebuilt, we did maybe two tests a day. One, one to two, maybe more, um, just because of the rebuild process. So it was a very slow start. It was a try it, go do something else for a while. Try it. It was a multitasking effort. So we learned, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I, 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 which ones are remote? I, is it only the last one? Only the last one is remote. So you want your old data directory first, your new data directory, and then your remote directory. Because what's happening is you're taking the difference between your old data and your new data, and you're rsyncing that over. That's what makes it super fast. You're not rsyncing everything. In our case, we went with size, um, and it Yes. The question was uh, the ex explanation of the directories in the rsync. So it is the, the old directory, so in our case it was the 9.2 directory, and then the 9.4 directory, and then your slave's remote directory. So 9.4. Yep, so 9.2 master, 9.4 master. So the directory above the, right? Yes. The directory above, above the two. Above Yes. Yes. So you can get rid of all the above below. You always put slash dot. We'll get to that. That's important. And the question was you can get rid of all the above if you put slash dot. Well, just, just a second. So we got through that. So we learned, we test. And then to answer that exact question, we moved. Because we found that you had to have your target directory not just above your old and new directories, but on the same level. And you have to have your first directory sort ahead of your second directory. And if you're using the Postgres default directories, then that's not a problem because they're all in bar lib version. And so it makes sense. We were not. We had our stuff in serve PG data data. And uh, we were putting it in 9.4 data. And by having it sort after like that, then uh, it made the rsync not do the hard link first, so it would do the copies. By having the hard link directive in rsync, it's supposed to say, oh, this is, this is, uh, these files are the same, oh, and this is a hard link to it and not copy anything. 
if we didn't have the sort done correctly, it would copy all the data over, and then later it would notice, oh, this is a hard link, and do the hard linking. And so it was kind of like doing the thing that we were trying to keep it from doing. And the funny thing is, is I couldn't make it do it with a small number of files, but, but when it got to be a huge number of files, it was consistently that way. And we actually tested this at PGCon Silicon Valley, and I had a special cl cluster where it's like, let's just try it without doing that, because that seems weird, and indeed, it failed, so. Um, it, 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 it's because of the sort directory, the kernel uh, directory return order, there's a B tree in there. And that's why it fails for small directories, because it's all at the same level. It's not a two-way B tree, it's a, a two-way, six-way B tree. I'm totally gonna repeat that. It's the sort level of the kernel. So the kernel's of of the kernel's reader because of the and B tree on the index. And return it, sort it, yeah. but so not always. I remember the day that James came in and said, let's try this. It was magical. <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it, it really was. It, was. it was, he had obviously thought of this either in the middle of the night or in the morning and just came in and said, let's try this. And it was, it just, it was that shining light that suddenly our R sync gave us the speed that we promised. It was it was a beautiful thing. Was, wow. Yeah. Okay. And our sync is missing a sort of command internally stuff like. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. That, that should not be. Our sync should be smarter than that. But okay. And I, I think it was just when it had a lot of files, it just was like, oh, I have all these files, and it just didn't check to see if there yeah. were like it. It's it got the the files that it got first. It did them, and it said, oh, I don't have them over there. So it did the copy, and then it. Followed up with the hard link but rather than. Yes. I mean, just two quick things. Let's, we need to figure out, we need to put that in the doc, in the Postgres doc, right? That's why I'm giving you this doc. <laughs> and then we need to file a bug with our sync, in my opinion. But okay, it's interesting. Okay, if that comes out of this, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so our second hurdle was configuration and reset. As we mentioned, we had some legacy systems, and even though we'd done a lot to modernize our configuration, um, just a year prior to this project, servers were built with a hand bash script and a lot of hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we, uh, we moved into the uh, 21st century by using CF Engine, um, but there was still a lot of cruft at that point in building up a server. So every time we had to reset because we failed this rsync because it didn't sort correctly, we had to go through the whole process of building the server again, and it was painful. It was super, super painful. So the solution was fix your tech debt. We also learned from that, do not init the slave. If you init the slave, your PG version file will exist on the slave. It will be initted to a version that is different than the master, and the process will balk. Because the rsync, to make it go fast, you're doing a size comparison. And that file is a fixed size no matter what. And so if you have the slave initted, that file will be there. It'll get skipped over. And you have the wrong, it, you know, the, the two clusters don't think they are the same thing, even though they're mostly the same thing. Right. So install, do not init. Yeah. Um, why do you not use the time step then? Like it's the same speed. Actually, oh, the, I see it too, and I'm well, it, I, I don't think the timestamps on your slaves necessarily match the timestamps on your master, no. and so you're going to copy a lot of. Yeah, then you're going to copy. That's the reason why you can't use the timestamps because it's either someone else's thing. Yeah, the other the other choice or would be. The one that might be good some of the time. But you know, then the other choice is MD5 sums, which just take, take a, a long, long time. time to calculate. Actually, the so, MD5 yeah. sum route was the route that Josh had men mentioned when he first did it, and it was the time to calculate the MD5 sum that made him abandon it because that takes almost as long as the full rsync itself. So it was the using uh, size only that makes this process work. But you're absolutely right. It has to be completely empty. Yes. Yes. Right, yeah. Right. So, so there's actually a last paragraph about the recursion and the hard linking issue in the rsync man page. There's a no pink recursive that says it will solve the problem. Maybe. Maybe it's not the same problem. <laughs> I highly encourage you to test this. We have done this. I don't have we, we can talk. 
I, I, I would think is that I, I, I think that the right answer is that if you have time, because I think you could do this in advance, is you could do the, the checksum R sync that sets the that would that would make sure they're really the same, that would result in the timestamps being identical. Ahead of time? So ahead I mean, of time. There's, there's actually another problem with that is and that is that they are not actually the same. Due to HintBits and other so, things, the files on the slave may not actually may not We're actually totally going to talk about HintBits. So, so that's we, are, we are going <laughs> to get there. <laughs> so, so hang on. We went with what we did because we got it working, long story short. And when we were already two weeks into testing with this, it worked. So our third hurdle was we got everything R-Synced. It's fast. We got a master upgrading. We had our R-Sync happening. Everything is cool about a third of the time. Then we had to resume replication. So you got your slave going, and it didn't start. We would get timeline issues. We would get permissions issues. It was just a bear. So our solution was to start backup before the rsync. So as I mentioned, rsync was the original way of building out a slave uh, pre-9.2. So before you could do PG-based backup, you did an rsync. Um, and you would start the backup, rsync, stop your backup, resume. There was no reason not to do that in this process. So per totally normal, we went back to that. We started the uh, PG start backup before we started the rsync. Once the rsync was done, we stopped it. That solved most of our problems. That was, that was a beautiful piece in this. It stopped almost all of the slave not being able to restart due to timeline or inconsistencies. So then about. When we started the rsync on the master, we did the start backup, and then we rsynced all the slaves, and then stopped. So our fourth hurdle was about uh, two weeks, maybe, before we actually got to the maintenance window itself, we found out that our master for our primary cluster was CentOS 5. As you recall, that was one of the restrictions on this whole thing was that we were phasing out CentOS 5, which means we hadn't even built support to put the Postgres 9.4 packages on CentOS 5. I think we did, but we were totally going to not tell anybody we did that because we wanted it out. <laughs> so by sleight of hand, we had to find a way to do a master-slave swap and not upgrade our CentOS 5 box. So we did the swap on the upgrade. It worked beautifully. And what I mean by that was we just ignored the fact that there was a 9.2 master, went to a slave, upgraded the slave, set its timeline latest for all the other slaves, and upgraded them via the rsync method. So what was that? Oh, in the, so this is the whole reason we upgraded is because in 9.2, um, if you swapped masters, you had to rebuild all of your slaves because the timelines won't sync correctly. So in 9.3, that was fixed, and you could do master-slave swaps with minimal downtime because the slaves would follow the new master. So that was our whole point of this upgrade. Um, it just happened that it took us a while to get there, so we went straight to 9.4 instead of stopping at the 9.3. So are there any questions on that? I thought this was a pretty clever spot. I mean, come on. So our day of our four clusters that we had to do, um, two geographical shards, sandbox, and a uh, third related product. The first one, our largest, took three hours. There were some hiccups in that. We'll talk about them. The second cluster took 28 minutes. And this includes the whole, like, Hey, everyone, I'm stopping Postgres. Are we good? OK, are all the connections down? OK, all of those steps are included in this. This isn't the rsync time. This isn't the time for PG upgrade. This is from the, hey, I'm starting this now through until my cluster is analyzed, production is back up. The QA said it was OK. Said it was okay. <laughs> right. So the great part about that is analyze takes a little bit of time. When you analyze a 700 gig cluster, that's going to take a lot of time. And we did not write a multi-threaded analyzer, which you can totally do. And I recommend it if you want to get that time much, much shorter. But we elected to not because 
with the R-Sync improvement, we were able to upgrade in such an amount of time that we could, we could totally just sync that into our window. It was something we could, we could do and not worry about a multi-threaded analyze. So our, our second cluster, 28 minutes, 53 minutes for the third. And I think on that third cluster, that was the Marx cluster, there was a, I think we actually fat fingered something and did it the slow way. The slow way being when you build a slave normally without using rsync. Just go back to the normal Postgres uh, PG-based backup build slave. I remember something about I that one. one like one of the slaves went a little slower. Yeah. Yeah, multiple process. Right. Yeah, super easy. Uh, the, the question was talking about the multi-threaded analyzer. I should, I should have said multi-process analyzer, where you open multiple connections and, and analyze multiple tables at once. Instead of going with the one that is shipped in PG upgrade, which does a table-by-table -table analyze over three passes, or one if you want to get back up quickly. Um, in our case, we just left the normal with three passes because we could do it in under three hours. And then there was the fourth cluster. We don't like to talk about the fourth cluster. <laughs> Uh, we, <laughs> yes? Will yeah. you talk about it? I, uh, I, I will, that's why I put it in there. That was what we call our sandbox cluster, and um, it never had a slave, it only had a master, so we had to build a slave onto it. And when we say sandbox, we don't mean internal sandbox, we mean this is the sandbox that our customers use for load testing. For trials, plug -in for, yeah, plug-in testing. Um, their development box against us. And so we've never really treated that like a full member of the family. Um, it just comes along for the ride. And uh, we got to day of with that guy and found that the host names that talked to it were hard-coded. Yeah, I'm not talking C names. I'm talking like the application had direct server names. Thank you. The application had the, the name of the server hard-coded into it. So this was totally not our fault. Uh, this, was, this was tech debt and bad configuration baked into that environment. So the fact that it had never had a master-slave swap was what killed it. We ended up calling uh, devs in on um, Saturday morning to fix their configuration just to get this one back up. So it was not a success story, but that was not because of the upgrade. That was because that environment was untestable. So it's here as a point of test, fix, repeat. Be aware of everything you're getting into with every environment, even if you don't like that environment or you don't want to consider it part of the family. You should still know what you're getting into. And if something has been a one-off for the last three years, expect it to be a lot of filled with wrong. Yes. <laughs> I think filled with wrong was the appropriate term for that. Because there was other wrong with that thing too, because all the configurations were done by hand and they didn't match the other ones necessarily. Like the actual directories where things were installed were different. So uh, my configuration made some assumptions about, about where things were installed that weren't actually accurate on this environment. Um, it, was, it was just not pretty. It was a special snowflake and the special snowflake bit us. So the uh, three-hour upgrade for that 700 gig cluster, let's talk about that one for a minute because that's actually the more interesting one. That was when one of the slaves that I was working on, and by the way, we divided this by cluster. So I upgraded two clusters, James upgraded two clusters, and we worked in parallel to get the whole thing done within the single window. On the second slave of our primary cluster, I had catastrophic disk failure. I lost my entire PG data partition. Yeah, that's not exactly what you want to see. Uh, and after verifying this and looking at the box for a second, I said, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> Handed that box off to uh, operations and continued on. And the whole thing was OK because we didn't panic. We didn't worry about it. We were on a degraded cluster at that point, and we knew it but we could rebuild a box and we could do something about it. So the whole point was we could have totally said, hey, we only have two servers, a master and a slave, we require three. We thought we had four, oh my God, now we have half of the cluster. 
but it was okay. And more importantly, no one above us cared because we survived. So the second window that we did, having survived the first, having come up within our four hour window and met our SLA, we moved on to the second. Our 80 gig cluster went in three minutes. It was beautiful. How many replicas were there? Two, two replicas. And by the way, all of, all of these times are only for one data center. We did our DR stack separately, um, just because the number of servers that it took was a little bit too much. Yeah? On the degraded cluster, um, was there a risk? You said you could rebuild the, the, the system, but if, that, if, if something else had gone wrong, would, would that have been a crisis that you, you would have an extended downtime? And so the question was about the degraded cluster and that we could rebuild something. Um, the situation was that we could come up on two servers. Um, three we typically handle as our minimum, but we had chosen a down. I, I guess what I'm asking is, what was the worst case? Was the worst case that you would abort the upgrade and mm -hmm. be back live immediately? Or was the worst case that you would be down for a day and rebuild the system? The worst case scenario was that we would swap to DR servers. So you'd be back, you would just have to abort the upgrade. We would abort the upgrade for that cluster. Right. And we would run with a split 9294 instance. That would have been the worst case scenario. Um, Right. Our, path, right, our path to get away from that was to take that CentOS 5 box that we had pulled out, emergency upgrade it to CentOS 6 and put it back in the stack. I think that's what we did, was it? All right, we're, uh, we're getting, let me zoom through these pretty quickly so we can do the actual demo for you. Um, so second upgrade went pretty good except for that uh, the 320 went in 35 minutes, but still that's almost as fast as our fastest clusters on the first day, so practice. Practice makes it better. So we don't know why that second cluster, and by the second cluster, I mean our primary cluster that went kind of slow. It went slow partially because in the middle of it we had catastrophic failure, but one of the servers, neither of the two actually when they built, and I didn't know about the failure until after the rsync finished, by the way. That was when we, coming back up and trying to bring the Postgres up was when it failed. So. We didn't exactly know why those slaves went slowly. The R-Sync didn't go super fast. The R-Sync took about an hour. And we're all kind of confused by that because the other cluster that had you know, a couple hundred gigs went fairly fast. So why is it the 700 gig cluster went slow? And in talking about it, we think that it is the HitBits. Hint. hint, sorry. Yeah. I keep saying. But yes, um, we, we think that the difference between the master and slave was in the HitBits. And that was why it went slowly. We can't, we, I would love other suggestions or proof, but right now it is simply a theory. Was it just the R sync that was slow? Just the R sync. Only oh, the R sync so went slow. Those files are detected as different. If yes. Fall back to the regular. Well, well but if it's using content. size only, if it was using size only, then the only time it would even look at anything is if the sizes were different. I'm guessing maybe somehow you add sizes different, yeah. size differences, but that seems. Kind of scary. There, <laughs> it does yeah, seem scary. Crash. Yeah. Yeah. Get a crash. That would be like one file. That had the, did these servers ever crashed? Oh, all have? the time. That's why we have multi slaves. Right. So it's possible you had a bunch of excess garbage that actually just got copied because it wasn't on the replica. So our solution to this was just rebuild the slaves as close to the upgrade as possible to make sure your slaves are fresh and clean. Yeah, but that doesn't help if you've got a lot of excess like temp files on your master from crashes that or That's or totally crashes. possible. Yeah. That I guess that there were some files there that actually had to get copied. One one yeah. thing that happens if you drop the table and crash before the next checkpoint, I think, is we don't need to ever clean that up because that's apparently a okay. like the extra data files that were Yes. I don't know our sync well enough to figure out if it's dry run or if something needs to get done beforehand. Yeah. Yes. How much is going to there is. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't we, do the data comparison, and it just tells you what files it would try to copy. Yeah. It doesn't on, tell you how long. How efficient it would do it. Though. Right. So if you see three hundred gigs, you can copy. Yeah. No, no, because it's going to say I'm going to so. copy three hundred gigs to three hundred gigs, but it doesn't tell you that it's going to. It's going only to only copy six bytes. Let's keep moving. Yeah, we, we want to get to the demo. We want to get to the demo. So the summary is that the upgrade was the easy piece. 
So if you get through that, the rest is hard. No, I'm kidding. But you want to totally establish it ahead of time. Practice, test over and over and over, even if that's painful, even if it takes a long time to rebuild your slaves, practice. When we did this this week for this talk, we failed our first time. Having done this whole process, I lost count of how many times we did this last summer. But we failed on Monday to do this again. So prepare fresh servers and do it constantly. And I wanted to thank specifically Bruce, Josh, and Stephen for all the pointers and all the help in getting us pointed to this path because it really was awesome. So with that, I'm going to hand everything over to James, and he's going to take you through a live demo. OK, so I actually have. Oh, the last slide is our emails in case you have questions. Um. Oh, that's probably why it's not getting messed up by my beard. Um, is that okay? Sounds like it's working now. Don't mind me, I was actually investigating some stuff from being on call. So I actually have one of the machines that we took out of the cluster when we were upgrading due to its CentOS 5-ness. Um, and I can't remember if that's my master or my slave at the moment, but we actually have a CentOS 5 box and a CentOS 6 box and a... Don't sign in, don't sign in. Oh, you need to. So what we have is a spreadsheet that we used for our day of upgrades that has every command for every box in order. It was how we kept sanity and let everybody else follow along with what we were doing during the day of the maintenance window. Everyone of your eyes, <laughs> okay. Yes. It's, it's better than the, uh, the last time I was giving a video presentation. I uh, didn't notice that I didn't get asked for a log, like a username, and I was asked for a password and went ahead. Type, or I was, I was not expecting to get asked for a username, and, and I was. Okay. Uh, this is actually a lot harder with the resolution changed. Uh, oh, yeah. That's well, he found that when he reduced the resolution. Yeah, okay, there we go. Okay. Oh, there Can you people go. still read that? Okay. So. This is, a, this is a speed match now. And we will skip that because it's already done. So James has just stopped PG Bouncer on the master and the slave. Uh, and? We know that nothing's connecting to it because this is our uh, test purpose cluster. So. Um, we actually had a question about the checkpoint step. When doing the PG-based backup, we thought that might not be necessary. Because you do the checkpoint step to flush everything down. You shouldn't need a checkpoint. checkpoint. Well, we're not using PG-based. We're not using PG based backup. But even so, I don't think you would need to do it to put the checkpoint. But we found that that was one of the problems when we were starting up the slaves. If they didn't have the exact same point in the logs when we started them back up, they would fail. I, I, yeah, I thought we did a. That was when we introduced doing the uh, PG start backup pointer. Because that solved this problem. So, so it we fit. Right. So. Yeah, it does create checkpoints. Right. So this is an extraneous point. Should I, should I try it without no, this? No, just keep going forward. Okay. Right. <laughs> we did it to be safe, because once you find something that works, you keep with it. Yeah, I mean, once you stop it. Oh, yep, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. Postgres yeah. down. It's in, it's in the devel docs to do the checkpoint. They match. <laughs> <laughs> We so, thought that it wasn't quite necessary, but. I'm like 99% sure. Oh, wait, where's my. Not. So I wrote the notes that Bruce wrote the docs from, and I don't 
Thing. That's why I'm looking at you while I'm talking about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Um, shutting down the mouse yes. shutting down, shutting down doesn't check. But there were, yes, you can shut down the master and the slaves and not be at the same point, which is what we were trying to get away from. So you're. Slaves should get the results of, when you shut down, the slaves should get everything. And yeah, no, not all the time. Yeah, there is a so back to the air segment side. Is the mouse segment always the same side? Yeah, all yeah. segments are always the same. So side. that could be a case where checkpoint sort of cleaned it up, uh, but you shouldn't need to do that because you shouldn't have been. I think there was, there used to be a problem where when you shut down the slaves. What happened? Yeah, oh. So what's happening? Yeah, right. okay. What happened? Right. I wasn't looking. I got clusters are not compatible. Wait. 9.4 data, they shouldn't, it should have a 9.4 database. So our um, our live demo might be a lightning talk demo. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> We've prepared multiple clusters. Uh, no pressure. Yes. <laughs> so our configuration relies on a profile file that we use to build everything. Oh, okay. Did you not init? Nope. Oh. So. I'm doing this because we do some things that we have our X logs in a different directory than uh, the PG data directory. And we do some same linking. And if I make the automation do it, then it does it all right. And I don't have to remember what I'm actually supposed to do to make it work. Um. So there's actually a lot of stuff hidden in our configuration steps. Um, but all that we basically do is install Postgres and swap masters. So any place in, this, in the instruction list where you see us running automation, it's specifically just to make sure that we have the proper directory layout and that we have all the proper configuration for masters. So the, that could all be done by hand, but like we said earlier, when you do things by hand, you screw it up. So. Yes. And and the sort and the sort order. The sort order was important. The PG start backup saved us a lot of of headache. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah, if you're using the out of the box directory locations, that won't be an issue. But if you're doing anything with a non standard directory location, that's going to be the case. Okay, clusters are compatible, so I'm running PG upgrade. We did have quite a few clusters that were not compatible because we still had some Sloney legacy on some of them, or we had, or bits of Sloney stuff that wanted us to install Sloney on the 9.4 cluster and we didn't want to. Um, it's amazing how Sloney does not die. <laughs> this step even though I discovered it was wrong about them. Well, I, I, I still had the, uh, the, the, pre, the pre name, but you just have to get your recovery comp out of the way so when you rsync everything over, um, because the rsync step, we have uh, delete. Um, if, if, you don't, uh, if you don't get your recovery comp out of there, once you do the uh, rsync, it you, will yeah, it will clobber your recovery comp, 
And then if you start your database with the recovery comp missing, you get to start the process over again. <clears throat> Starting the backup. Why are you? Are you on the slave? No. Oh, am I? Is my my cluster still down? This step well, work. No. Uh, no, you did that step. You didn't change the wall at all. But, but it should already be set properly. Are you on? Are you sure you're not on the slave? It wasn't the slave. No, you're on the master. All right. So technically, we're over. <laughs> <laughs> but it uh, worked. Yeah. Didn't you? Well, you can't do the start backup without doing the R sync. Okay, I wasn't calling that one. You shouldn't have to start post You should be able to do the upgrade, then R sync with the database. That's, 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 where, that's where we got issues. So I had to issue the start back. I, we were doing the upgrade, then the start backup, then the, yes. then the sync. Yes. But why is this I, not I know, making? but it works. Yeah, I mean, I, most of the time it works, but <laughs> as the rule of demos says, it doesn't now. Well, yeah, naturally. So there is no recovery, Tom. <laughs> Yay!